Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Happy Thursday for those that are tuning in live. And for those that are tuning in any day of the week, thanks so much for being here. Just one service announcement. We will be off tomorrow and on Sunday, coming back on Monday. We look forward to that. Please check out the different programming changes. Excited for the new developments that you hopefully will be able to appreciate about the boost. Today is a day in the Jewish calendar called the Fast of Esther. Maybe we'll touch a little bit on that, that which applies, the lessons applies no matter what, what your faith is. We've been trying to live in this space in the house that we're building, the real house that we're building, the house that doesn't have real estate taxes, the house that can go anywhere, right? We are just for the, for the record, there's no coffee anywhere near me today because it's a fast day. As you can see, I feel like a little off, you know, like I'm on the field without my stuff. Like I don't have my, I don't, I don't have my equipment. This house that we've been building together, we're sort of coming, I guess, to the end of the example. I'd like to sort of conclude a little bit. This concept of where our lives really operates at multiple levels. And when we live in a little bit of a deeper level, we use the same resources as everybody else, except we attach to things in a much more of an intimate way. And so as a result, the quality of our life goes up. This is really, um, this is a thing that you don't really get unless you search for wisdom, which is the, th the things that we really want in life. It's not about the newness. It's not about the, 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 the size, it's not about the label. What we really are all after in life is an experience in life. We assume that it is the circumstances that give us experiences. It's not, it's the relationship to the circumstances that give us our experiences in life. So my relationship to the people in my life is what gives me the feeling, not the people in my life. My relationship to the things around me my relationship to the food that I eat, my relationship to the world around me. When my relationship to the thing goes up, then my experience goes up. We assume that I'm doing everything I can and it is the thing around me that is going to make me feel differently. So if I get a new car or a new job or more money, or if my spouse, wife, friend, kid would have just done this, had I been here, grown up here, not had this happen, then all those things would have contributed to a different experience of life. Now, as I'm saying it, just sort of pull out the extremes because that stuff always gets in our way from the rule. And then you can apply the extremes, but just pull out the extremes for a second. In the normal aspects and the normal way of life, with God's help, it is not the things that bring us the feelings. It is our relationship to the things that bring us the feelings. We assume that if I can control the world, then I will feel better. Or if I can at least control the world around me, then I will feel better. And we don't realize that it has very little to do with how you're going to feel. Circumstances really don't matter. They matter, but not really. What matters is the relationship to circumstance. So believe it or not, in the hotel room of two different athletes, one having won the Super Bowl and one having lost the Super Bowl, the one having won the Super Bowl could be in a place that is much lower, much sadder, much less excited and empowered than the guy in the next hotel over that lost. It's the relationship to what you do that gives you the feeling that you crave. 
And what we've been trying to do together over the past few days and week or so is to recognize that to do this properly, I have to build up pieces of my mind so that I can go to those rooms quicker, so that I could trigger these thoughts and live my life and just almost automatically, if I do this over time, live a deeper experience without even having to you know, make myself crazy all the time. I just know there's a threshold that I walk through into that room. And now I'm living my day and it's nine o'clock and I go into a space. And I'm leaving my day and it's 10 30 and I go and I see this person, I go into a space and I'm just triggering and building and triggering and building these different pockets of my life. So, and I continue doing it and hold on to it so that at some point I really spend lots of my day living in a deeper place. So my relationship to the thing that I have is deeper so that my experience in this world is better. And I don't have to spend my efforts going for the thing that I think is going to give me the, the feeling that it won't. I can spend my efforts in the things that I have and the extra stuff will come or not, but it's not going to throw me. I was having a conversation with my rabbi and he was explaining to me how, you know, being the rabbi of a congregation, you see lots of people. And he was explaining to me how this whole virus, this COVID experience, it just brought out people in such interesting ways. And the people, again, it's, he just spoke about a few different groups. Of course, there's so many, but he said, there are some people that have been working on themselves, their faith, their resilience. And this experience brought out the best in them, it brought out the best in them. They're stronger from it. Their families are closer from it. They're deeper from it. Because then there are people that weren't as cognizant of their, of their issues in their families and their marriages and their own minds. They were just too busy running through life to work on themselves and this thing wiped them out. We don't work on our lives when the storm comes in. We work on our lives in peacetime. So when the storm comes in, God forbid, if, if a storm comes in, we're ready, we're prepared. And where we left off, where we left off yesterday, which is very much tied into the great Queen Esther, maybe I could speak about it for a minute or two, but for those who, who are who who get timeless lessons, we'll go a little bit further in depth. Where we left off yesterday was, I think, almost at like, I guess the final, I don't know, it's the final chapter, but you know, we can close out there, which is the perspective of the room. For this to work, to live deeply, the, the pathway of depth is sacrifice. That's how you, you, that's how you deepen, you sacrifice. You, a deeper relationship is based on the sacrificing of each other to each other. The reason why kids can leave their parents faster than parents can leave their kids is because the parents sacrifice for their kids more than the kids sacrifice for their parents, especially when they're younger. As they get older, as they get older, the tables turn, but when they're younger, you know, there's the reason why the teenager forgets to text mom back and mom is waiting up. It's because mom has invested and sacrificed more for that kid than the kid has sacrificed for the mom. The depth of the relationship comes into the world of sacrifice. In Hebrew, this is called love. In Hebrew, the word love is ahava. It's spelled I, Aleph, Hey, uh, Bet, Hey, ahava. In the middle of that word is a Hey and a Bet. That spells Hav. Hav is Hebrew for giving. In the center of the word for love is the word for giving. That was the words of the famous Rav Dessler. So when you're in the room, when you're in the relationship, when you're in the Zoom call, wherever you are, understand that the jackhammer that you're going to pull out to feel deeply connected to that which is in front of you is going to be, what can I do for you? What is it that you need of me? 
How can I empathize to try to place myself in your shoes in order to better understand your needs? That, that trait is what drives us to connect to that which is in front of us, which deepens our connection. The ability for somebody to say to another, I'm willing to sacrifice what I want in this next few moments to what you want. It's hard, but it's the way. And here's why we don't do it. Because we think that there's some solution that we're trying to get after. We think there's like a win. We think there's like an objective you know, prize of some sort. We think that like the goal of parenting is to get the kids to be somebody, to get to be our kids to be something. We think the goal of work is to make money. We think the goal, we think our goals are that which we are striving towards. But that's not really the goal. That's the direction. Maybe it's flipped. Maybe getting our kids to be something is really just an excuse to get ourselves to connect to our kids. You see, the reason why we are not more interested in giving ourselves is because we think that there's a goal that we are after. We think there's a goal that we want the person in front of us to be after. We assume that what we're doing every day is trying to achieve objectives. And we know the objectives to achieve. And so when we walk into the career or into the parenting or into the relationships or into the friendships, or even into spirituality, we go to God with an objective. Hey, God, how are you? I heard if I say these words, you're going to hook me up. So I am here for an objective. My objective is a better life. I just believe because either I stumbled into it myself or somebody gave it to me that the way I get my better life is with you. That's cool. I can do that. I kissed up to the admissions office to get into college. I kissed up to the, you know, head recruiter to get into law school. Like, I can kiss up to you. Whatever. I have an objective. I know what I want to be in life. I wrote my goals down. I did the visualization exercise from the boost. I know exactly where I'm going in life. All the rooms in my life are trying in some way to maintain that objective. And if whether it's for me or it's for you. That's what, how great I am. My job is to help you achieve the objective that we both agree for your life. My friend's advice. I'm giving you advice. I know exactly what you need in your life. Now, objectives are important. Maybe they're not the goal. See, maybe the objective is just an excuse for the relationship. Maybe what's more important than the objective is the relationship that you have. And the relationship to the thing that you're in front of is really where your greatness lies and really where their greatness lies. Maybe God isn't a mechanism to get our objective. Maybe the objective is the relationship to God because we don't even know what we want. And we've never experienced a real relationship with God. And if you get that, all the stuff you're asking for is like, well, that's not as important as that. You see, if we'd walk into rooms in our lives and our relationships and say to ourselves, the most important thing I have in this room is this person. And the way that I connect with this person is by trying to identify and empathize with them so I understand them. And if I can somehow increase my relationship to this person, yeah, of course we have to go do things and we have objectives. Okay, that's called living in the day of the day life. But what I'm really after is the person. I'm really after my spouse 
of course we have to worry about how to do this and how to do that. And we're talking about this and this challenge that's in front of us. Yeah. What I'm really after in this conversation is my spouse, is my friend, is my kid, is my community. Because I can't see 10 steps ahead of me. And I can't see what I'm going to need in two years from now. I only see what I need now, but that's my, that's a pretty limited perspective. Let me tell you what I do know. If there's a person in my life, they, that person is a piece of God. And that person has got energy beyond me. The most valuable thing is not what I'm after. The most valuable thing is the person in front of me. What, am I, what, what I'm after is going to change. When we look around and we realize it is the relationship to the thing that I want, not the thing. I don't want that person to do this thing for me or that thing for me. It just looks like that because I got to be their boss. What I really want is a relationship to that person. Now, it doesn't mean you do that for everybody. It doesn't mean that everyone has a room, right? There's a reason why we have groups of people. There's a concept even in Jewish law about charity going to your community before the world to one's family before the community there's priorities in life there's only a certain amount of time a day yeah when you go to your introspection room you got to figure out where you're allocating your time i've gotten hit over the head once or twice before in my life for running around a little too much and not spending enough time in my house and i got it and i get a call once in a while like, can you come do this thing i'm like i can't they're like what are you crazy like this could this could be beneficial for x y and z i'm like yeah but what about my first priority. And I should always have the, the, the good fortune to be having these questions, but there's priorities in life. That's okay. But when you're in the room, when you're at the job, when you're with the person, when you're, when you have the moment to pray, when you're with, when you're at the book, when you're working on your, your career, when you're talking to your parent, when, when you're in the place that you already decided to be in, what you're looking for is the person, is the relationship to the thing, the book. What you're looking for is to deepen the, the, the channels, the cables, so that it connects. Because it's in that connection that you get all the benefit. It's in that connection that you get much more than anything else that you can ever ask for in your whole life. Reach the top of your life alone, it doesn't feel like it. You feel reached top of your life with a community, with friends and family. Even if you reach a hundred degrees underneath, it feels totally different. And we could every single day, every single exchange, deepen ourselves by deepening our connections to each other and then create and enhance our experience in this world. It's right in front of us. It doesn't require a buy-in. There's no ticket in. There's no net worth threshold. There's no degrees. There's no prereqs. It's just a decision to sacrifice. Sacrifice what I want from you to figure out what I can do for you. That's the game. And when you build a house with your different rooms and you build thresholds and you take the time look at your life and to siphon off the things that are more important and then you walk into that room and you touch the dimmer and you turn it on to the give and you let it go stuff happens that's the story by the way and i'll end with this of queen esther queen esther was disassociated with her nation remember her nation was suffering from a decree of annihilation she was pretty much saved in the corner of the palace, no one knew her nationality. What she did was sacrifice her life for the Jewish people today. She wasn't after an objective, she wanted to save them. But what she was doing is saying, I don't know if I'll make it, but I'll give it to my people. She was willing to walk in at the threat of death because she realized that it was the relationship between her and her people that was the most important thing. And she was willing to give up everything 
for her people. And, and, and some say it was that merit of giving to each other that we got saved on the day of Purim, which is tomorrow, which is why we have customs of giving things to each other. Because when you're willing to give to somebody else at a real level consistently, that's when the miracles start. Sometimes in our lives when we feel like we're not achieving enough, it could be because we're not attaching enough to others. We're too focused on our objectives. All right, everybody. Have an incredible weekend. For those that are observing, happy Purim. Shabbat Shalom, early. For wherever you are, thanks so much for tuning in. Again, we'll be back on on Monday. Try over the weekend to think about this. The mansion in your mind. The rooms in your life. Try a couple of times if you can. When you're sitting in front of somebody else. Picture the dimmer on the wall and turn it all the way to what's needed from me. How do I empathize more? How do I connect? Because this connection is more valuable than whatever else we're talking about. And hopefully together we could be bigger people and live higher quality lives. We'll talk a little bit more next week about what the impact of that is. But until then, let's just sort of try it ourselves. Have an amazing, amazing day. For those that are fasting, fast well. For those that are observing, happy Purim. Have an incredible weekend. And with God's help, I cannot wait to see you again next week.